Good morning. Um, our, our chair apparently has been in a fender bender and is unable to drive his car, so, um, so I'm, I'm sitting in for him, Debbie White. Um, I'm the vice chair. But um, good morning and welcome to Pinellas County Board of Adjustments and Appeals. We received your cases in advance and have studied them, and in some cases visited the site. <clears throat> Please understand that we don't bring these cases. We are citizens tasked with, the weighing, weigh, with weighing the evidence submitted in order to make the most informed decision possible. We have no personal interest or stake in these cases except for the overall good of the community. The staff has made recommendation on each case, and that recommendation is input only and may not necessarily be the opinion of this board. If you are planning to speak for or against any application, you must be sworn in prior to, tes to testifying. If you have not been sworn in, please do so now with the clerk at the front table. So hopefully everybody has, has signed in. This is how we will proceed. When your case is called by staff, the applicant will come right to the podium and give us your name and address. The applicant will then present their case, including comments from any supporters in attendance. Comments by supporters should be new information, not just an expression of support. The applicant may display the volume of support by show of hands. Speakers will have three minutes. Opponents will then be given an opportunity to state their objection. If there are numerous appointment op opponents, it is preferable for them, again, to select one or two sp <coughs> spokespersons. Speakers will have three minutes. Subsequent objectors should add new information, not just rehash prior stated objections. Opponents may also display the volume of objectors by a show of hands. This will be the only opportunity for opponents to state their side. The applicant will then return solely to rebut the comments of any opponents and may not bring any new information or testimony at that time. Finally, we will close the public hearing and the board will discuss the case and make a motion and vote. Our attorney will now provide additional information on our procedures. Thank you, Madam Chair. The matters heard by the Board of Adjustment and Appeals are quasi-judicial in nature. Please note that only competent, substantial, fact-based testimony or evidence may be considered by the board in deciding the matters before it. Pure speculation or opinion, not based on competent facts, cannot be legally considered by the board. Lay testimony with fact-based support, including but not limited to meeting minutes, surveys, engineering reports, etc., may be considered competent and substantial evidence. And Madam Chair, I said one more note. Uh, at the end of uh, the conclusion of the last meeting, a vote was taken to allow virtual attendance for the two items at this meeting. Right. That vote can stand so long as there's no one, you know, on the board who wishes to change that status quo or whatever. I believe That's the applicant. We did that. I believe because he, the applicant was. I mean, is he here? Is he? Yeah. He was. We thought he was going to be in Virginia, okay. and and because of the circumstances, we. It, my, I made the motion. It was only to let him, but up here well, it's, but, it's tough to do it well, in a meeting would, where we have more. I, I, that's kids. okay. But my question is, if we can do away with it, uh, can we do away with it now? Or depends it's been on how it was noticed. Though, and hasn't how, it? Yeah, it's been. Was it noticed up as noticed. Yeah. as virtual? Yeah, yeah we've got to keep it. So. Just remind me that I have to ask that again and again. Okay, but, <laughs> that's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they don't. You just feel that no one's really been on there yet. So okay. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. okay. All right, all right. Mr. Schroederback, <sighs> next first case, please. Hey, good morning. Our first case is VAR 24-02 from Hillary and Matt Simpson. This is a variance request to allow for the construction of an approximately 315 square foot detached pool house having a six foot side setback from the western property line where 15 feet is required for the property located at 12983. Hibiscus Avenue and unincorporated Seminole. Staff recommends conditional approval. The subject site is a little under an acre. Uh, it's improved with a one-story detached single-family <laughs> residence and in-ground pool. The owner is proposing to construct this 315 square foot detached pool house closer to the western property line than what is normally allowed. Uh, it's proposed there to first to avoid uh, natural vegetation. So if, if they were to put it on the north side adjacent to the pool, there's existing uh, mature trees uh, that uh, they're trying to avoid having to impact. Uh, also to aid in soundproofing from uh, noise that occurs <laughs> from the neighboring property to the west. Uh, there's an outdoor recreational court, tennis court, basketball court, and other outdoor amenities along the rear property line of the adjacent property to the west. 
and building setbacks are not required for this outdoor tennis court so it's really close to their their property line and uh, this pool house would add a physical buffer to aid in the reduction of both sound uh, and and light and noise so staff is recommending uh, conditional approval on this so as, it, I, as I understand this case it's a split zoning well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's two zones, please, the please first. Uh, Hillary Simpson, 12983 Hibiscus Avenue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead. No problem. <laughs> so it, if it were all R1, it would it would be allowed? Correct, yeah. But because it's a split zone, it's, you know, it's Yeah, the front of the property has R1 where the house sits, it's uh, RE. That's the difference, yeah. Any Are there any objectors either online or here in the room with us? Seeing none. Seeing no objection, I'm going to move for a staff recommendation of conditional approval in accordance with the findings of fact as outlined in the staff report. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes yeah. so six to one. I mean, six to zero. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Good job. I wasn't here, but it against you. I know, really. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not thinking. Okay. Next case. Our next case is VAR 23 22. Michael, Michael, could you pull up a, yeah, a, little, a little hard to hear over here? Can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Our next case is VAR 23 22 from Couture Revocable Trust, Joyce M. Couture, Stephen Couture. This is a request for variance setback requirements under uh, water nav regulations. So <coughs> we have water navigation staff here who uh, <coughs> will present on it, Julie Sims. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Julie Sims. I'm the program manager for the water navigation section. Let me know if I need to uh, speak up. <clears throat> so today we're here for a variance request associated with private dock application WND-22-00682. Oh, that's not working. There we go. The applicant's property is located at... Can we get this slideshow up on our screens? Nope. Not yeah. on my screen. It's not on your screen? It's on the back there. But it's there. there it is. There it is. It's gone. Thank you. <clears throat> the applicant's property is located at 600 Pennsylvania Avenue in Palm Harbor and is owned by Kucher Revocable Trust. The location is just a bit north of the Dunedin Causeway. It's starred in red on the location map there on your screen. And the project property is the Ryan's Woods townhomes. It's starred in orange on the location map. Here's just a, a better view of the applicant's property outlined in red. And here's a closer view of the project property, Ryan's Woods townhomes, outlined in orange. The proposed location of the observation pier is approximately where you see that yellow dot at the upper right-hand corner of the parcel. And here's just one more view, a pictometry view of the, um, the project area where that red pin is located. So one of the things that an applicant has to show when applying is that they have sufficient upland interest. Most of the applications that staff sees are parcels that are situated immediately adjacent to a waterway. This one is a little bit different. As you saw from the aerials, uh, this property is set back and it actually has access to the water through easements and you can see the easements on this slide in yellow and red. In order to make sure the applicant in this case can show they have sufficient upland interest, staff has worked with our county attorney's office to review the easement documents and have concluded that they do indeed have that upland interest. This review was restricted to only determining whether satisfactory upland interest was there. So section 58-555B2 of the Water Navigation Regulation states, 
private docks and boat lifts, excluding tie poles, must be constructed within the center one-third of the applicant's waterfront property or 50 feet from the adjacent property, whichever is less restrictive. This requirement may be waived by the county, provided that signed statements of no objection from the property owners encroached upon have been submitted. For this particular project, a side setback distance of 50 feet would be that less restrictive number. <clears throat> the proposed observation pier is shown on this slide in yellow. The structure would be placed within the 50 foot wide easement which extends west into the Finger <coughs> Canal and which also starts at the northern boundary of the Ryan Woods parcel. Um, as I said, per code, the pier must be built a minimum of 50 feet from the adjacent property to the north. As the pier can only be built within that easement, it must fall within the 50-foot setback, thus needing a variance of 16.5 feet. So it will be 33.5 feet away from that nor northern neighbor. A letter of no objection was not able to be obtained from the northern neighbor. That's why we're here today. And here's a clearer view of, of the design of the proposed observation pier. You've got your standard walkout that's four feet wide and that's going through some mangroves. And you've got uh, an observation pier head at the very end and it's got some stairs and also um, a kayak lift there on the southern part of the, the wider walkout. Per section 58-539C, in deciding whether to grant a variance, the board, board of adjustments and appeals, or county administrator, or his or her designee shall make a positive finding of fact to all the criteria set forth in section 138-231 of the Pinellas County Land Development Code. Staff has reviewed all of these criteria and has been able to make a positive finding to all as outlined in your staff report. Could you go back there, Smith? Yep. And so uh, you found all these A through H, you found they meet these? Yes. Okay. Yep. So therefore, uh, um, staff recommends approval of the variance to section 58-555B2 of the Pinellas County Code for a new observation pier within an easement that the Cocher Revocable Trust holds over the neighboring property owned by Ryan's Woods Townhomes Homeowners Association, Inc. And with that, I am available for any questions you may have. Thank you. I think we may want to call you back at some point. That's fine. Time, but move forward. Is it my understanding that the observation deck would not be permitted to have a boat lift, or, or, or is that still a possibility? No, they cannot have any type of boat slip, and it will be railed so that it prevents mooring of any vessels. Good morning. Good morning. Here, your name and address, please. Craig Tarasky, 490 First Avenue South, Suite 700, St. Petersburg. I'm attorney for the applicant, Coach Revocable Trust. I'm I've been sworn. Go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Good morning. I'm Stephen Kucher, <coughs> 600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Palm Harbor, Florida. And I'm here to give you some background information on my family's history, the land, and the observation pier, if that's allowed. Um, my father purchased this property in 1957, over 65 years ago, when he purchased the property. There was very little building around the area. It was mostly just land. He was the first physician, and only physician to my knowledge, to practice in Ozona and Dunedin at the time. Um, he used it as his homestead. He raised seven children there, and we've owned it ever since 1957. Um, at the time of the purchase, there was a small fishing dock, probably very similar to the fishing pier that we are proposing, located adjacent to the property, extended within our deeded easement into the Sutherland Bayou. At that time, there were no other homes in the area. Given that my dad was not a fisherman, over the years, the dock fell into disrepair and was washed away by the tides and the silt that now sits in the bayou. There are still remnants of the dock believed to be part of my dad's dock located further south in the bayou, and I do have pictures supporting that. We have met with county officials 
and have found that the fishing pier we are proposing will have minimal impact on the environment and surrounding neighbors. Given this and the fact that there was a dock there previously, we would appreciate a favorable decision for our family in regards to our variance request. Thanks. Uh, Thank one you, quick sir. question. When you say there are remnants, are the pilings there? There is a piling that is within almost 10 feet of where we're proposing to put the pier. And then further down in the bayou, there is a remnants of a dock that's, we believe is the dock just okay. kept washing down. Thank you. And I have a PowerPoint to go through. Is that up? Yes. You can see it? You can see it. We have it up there. Up there. You see it on the screen? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, as, as uh, staff, this is similar uh, aerial photos showing the location of the dock with the red circle. The orange outline is the Ryan Woods townhome parcel, with the uh, the dot being the location of the the upland, and the the red circle the dock. Um, these are the three parcels that we'll be talking about during the presentation. In yellow at the bottom right is the 600 Pennsylvania Avenue. That's the upland property of the applicant. To the north in red, that's the north parcel currently owned by the Janishes, and in purple is the uh, Ryan Woods townhome parcel. Uh, as staff explained, the applicant has the requisite upland interest through a series of easements that traverse uh, both the, the north parcel, the Janishes parcel, and the Ryan Wood townhome parcel. These date back to uh, the original deed from the Zimmermans to the Coachers in 1957. This is the language from that deed that was recorded that, that ex, uh, expresses the easement. Uh, it even expresses that <coughs> the purpose is for a dock for small boats may be constructed on the west end of the one easement and the other easement that extends further west is for uh, either a roadway or a ditch deep enough for small boats. Uh, in 2005, at that time, the neighbor to the north were the Wrights, and they, they acquired a piece of the Coacher's property. Um, and the, the deed, uh, this, this is a 2005 conveyance from Coacher to Wright of that, that piece of property. And going back here, it would be the <coughs> kind of the, the white square in the middle. That's the, the, the piece that was uh, acquired by the, the Wrights. As part of that closing in 2005, the Wrights and the Coachers executed two easement agreements that contemplated this dock being constructed to provide the Coachers with access since the Coachers were conveying that north uh, piece to uh, the Wrights to expand the footprint of their, their home parcel. So there's two easements. And then in 2009, the Wrights conveyed that north parcel to the Janishes. So the Janishes, the north, current north parcel owner, took ownership with either actual or constructive notice of the existence of all these easements and the intent of the coachers to, to build this dock. You might, you might want to repeat that for me. Sure. So you have recorded easements dating back in the deeds that back to 1957. And then when the coachers conveyed that piece to expand the footprint of the Norse parcel in 2005, they also recorded easement agreements to grant the coachers here access to the, their waterfront easement. So you can see this, this parcel in the upper right-hand corner was that piece that was conveyed in 2005. And you can see those easements running down the west edge of that parcel down to the culture, culture's parcel on the bottom right. Mm -hmm. And that allows, that series of easements gives them access to the water. <laughs> it is relevant that the north parcel owner doesn't actually own the waterfront along the majority of this, this easement area. This is a, uh, a a survey prepared in 2022 of the mean high water elevation showing that location. That dashed line on the, the top of that is the, the south boundary of the north parcel, the Janish's parcel. They do not have waterfront access 
directly located where the, where the dock's being proposed. This was a 2021 mean high water survey that was done in the location of the dock. So these tied together gives you a picture of, of where that mean high water is. And again, the series of easements tying back down to the culture's uh, property. And this is what we're asking for today, uh, a variance to allow a dock located 33.5 feet from the north boundary, the north property. And this, is, this variance is being requested because staff has interpreted the, the design criteria in your code to require 50 feet from the adjacent property. Um, I would argue that you don't even need to be seeing this today, that, that we're more than 50 feet from the adjacent property along the waterfront. However, staff has interpreted this language, plain language, it says 50 feet from adjacent property. That, would, that means it's dimension in every direction. And you're used to seeing these DOP applications with setback variances, with setbacks measured along the waterfront. This setback is being measured to an upland property line, across, excuse me, across uplands to the, to the adjacent property, not along the waterfront. Um, I think it's incorrect interpretation because your code, you have two ways of measuring setback. One is center third, and when you see center third, that's always measured along the waterfront, center third. Or the alternative is 50 feet, and all of a sudden they're introducing this additional criteria that it's in every direction, not just the waterfront. You see routinely where upland property owners build docks, they own up into the mean of high water line, like a seawall. And then that submerged land is either owned, it's either sovereignty submerged land, it's owned by the state, might be owned by the city of Clearwater, Pinellas County, but you never see those come in and asking for a variance because it's, that property line is 50 feet. Um, and that's, that's the interpretation that we're working with here, that it's in every direction, which I think is incorrect. Uh, so, nonetheless, we're here in front of you requesting this variance because that's staff's interpretation that we do need it. So we'll be asking for it and, we're, and we can justify it under the criteria that are in your code for granting the variances. The first one is that there's special conditions and circumstances that are peculiar. Uh, the unique shape of this property has a, a narrow sliver of uplands on the north end. It's well established that unique shapes of parcels give grounds for a variance. And it's also unique here that, that, as you can see by this exhibit, that the distance between the dock and the north owner's actual waterfront property line is approximately 145 feet. And that's kind of what I was getting at before, is that our setback actually exceeds the 50 feet that's required. Um, so to the extent you know, the, the north parcel owner has some expectation of where docking facilities would be located along that waterfront, we're 145 feet from their nearest property line along the waterfront. Other criteria is that the, the literal interpretation of the provision of the code would deprive or make difficult uh, the applicant to achieve the same proportion of development potential enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning district and that that hardship's not self-imposed. These easements, the original easements in the deeds go trace back to 1957 which is prior to the county adopting the, the current setback regulations, so it's not self-imposed. And that that literal interpretation of the 50-foot setback would push the dock facilities completely out of the easement. So then they'd fail having the requisite upland interest. So that would frustrate their actual use of, of the easement that's recorded. Uh, demonstrates a minimum uh, deviation <coughs> that makes possible a reasonable use. Uh, we push that dock as far south to maximize that setback to the north. Uh, the applicant and their consultant worked with county staff on locating it to, to minimize any environmental impacts, uh, submerged aquatic vegetation, and to minimize impacts to the mangrove fringe. Uh, demonstrate the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the code. Uh, the, the general intent and purpose is actually expressed in the code. It's to minimize impacts upon natural resources and scenic beauty of the county and to apply these regulations in a man, and I quote, in a manner sensitive to both the property rights of the applicant and the rights of the citizens of the county to enjoy the benefits of, their, of the resources. So it even expresses that it needs to be sensitive to the property rights of the applicant. And that's what we're asking for here, is to allow the applicant to, to utilize their easement interest. 
uh, demonstrate that a rezoning has been considered and not appropriate. These setbacks are, are uh, independent of zoning, so a rezoning would have no effect on what we're asking for today. Demonstrate that the variance is consistent with the intent and limits of the comp plan. Um, here I've quoted uh, Natural Resources Strategy 3.2.2.1. Uh, to implement the county water and nav regulations to ensure development is consistent with objective and policies pertaining to the protection, enhancement, and restoration of freshwater, marine, and coastal resources. Again, we located this dock to minimize impacts to any submerged aquatic vegetation and the mangrove fringe. Uh, comp plan policy, PR policy 1.1.1, the following private property rights shall be considered that the right of a property owner to physically possess and control his or her interest in the property, and it's, it says including easements, leases, and mineral rights, and the right of a property owner to use, maintain, develop, and improve his or her property for personal use and the use of any other person. Um, it expresses right in here in your comp plan that it needs to be respectful of, of uh, easement rights property owners. Uh, demonstrate that the requested variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welf welfare. Um, we don't find that there's any public interest uh, material impacted by this uh, 16 and a half foot uh, variance that we're requesting. Um, if a similar dock was located further away, it would have similar impacts on the environment. Um, again, we located it to minimize in impacts to submerged aquatic vegetation and mangrove fringe. And these easements date back to 1957 for the dock and channel and 2005 for the, the pedestrian vehicle access. The plat of Ryan Woods townhomes wasn't recorded until 1998, so they had constructive, either actual or constructive knowledge of, these, of the, the dock and channel easement. Um, there, as I explained before, there was the conveyance of a portion of the culture's, culture's property to the rights in 2005 that included recording easements to provide access through that property, currently the north parcel owned by the Janishes, to their waterfront. And then the Janishes took ownership of the north, north parcel in 2019 and would have done that with either actual or constructive notice of all of these easements that contemplated this dock that we're asking for today. Uh, lastly, that we demonstrate that the requested variance does not circumvent any conditions placed upon the subject property by the Board of Adjustment and Appeals or the BOCC. We're not aware of, the, of any specific conditions that would be impacted by this, this application. Uh, so with that, um, you know, there is some unique things about this. The easement issue is unique. I worked uh, several months with county attorneys just to, to work through that legal issue, that legal hurdle, and they've been satisfied that we have the requisite upland interest to have the dock, and then as I've expressed, we clearly have demonstrated that we meet all the criteria for granting the setback easement that we're asking for today. So, thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? Okay. I know there's, is there, is there anybody else here that wants to speak in support of, of this? No. I know there are people that are in opposition. Um, yeah, is there? Is there one sports spokesperson or a couple? Uh, come on up. I don't want to represent that I'm the spokesperson for everybody that might be against, but I do represent the property owners to the north. And, and your name and address, please. Yes, my name's Lauren Rubenstein from Dunhart and Rubenstein, 2700 First Avenue North. I was sworn in. And I do represent Michael and Christy Yanish. They are the property owners at 672 Soundview Drive, which is immediately to the north of that property. So as you heard already from the applicant and from staff, we're here today on that requested setback variance. So that setback is um, measured actually from my client's southern property line, which is their side property line, and I think that's important, and you heard a little bit about the unique configuration of these parcels, and I, I do encourage you to take that into consideration when you're looking at this. As you all are intimately familiar with, 
There are a lot of requirements that have to all be met in order to grant a variance, the criteria under Pinellas County Code, and we would respectfully disagree with the applicant and staff that all of those have been met. I think there's several that have not been met in this case, and I want to run through those. First one is special conditions or circumstances exist which are peculiar to the land involved. The land where this dock is proposed to be located is a very large parcel. It has over 600 feet of waterfront. There's absolutely nothing special about this parcel that would prevent a dock from being built that would comply with the current rules of Pinellas County Code. The applicant is asking that you only look at that <coughs> 50 feet that they have easement rights to. But there's no legal authority that has been cited that supports that interpretation. We're looking at the subject parcel where it's supposed to be built, 600 feet. And that takes us to that next criteria of unnecessary hardship. We don't meet that criteria either when we look at this application. Pinellas County Code is very clear that a self-imposed hardship cannot be considered for a legal hardship. The case law is clear. Legal hardship has to arise from circumstances peculiar to the land involved. Again, the land involved is 600 foot waterfront parcel. The applicant wants you to just look at that 50 feet, but that's not the legal criteria. That's not how the setback is configured. It's based on the entire waterfront parcel that's there. And they want you to ignore 550 feet and grant a variance to 33.5 feet away from my client's property line. They don't meet that definition of a legal hardship either. We then get to the minimal code deviation necessary to make reasonable use of the land. So you saw the overheads. I know I've included pictures and in my objection that was filed. You've seen it in the staff report. It's an interesting configuration of parcels. The applicant owns five acres of land, currently developed with what I understand is two single family homes. Under current zoning, they could develop 20 single family homes on that five acres of land. The subject, which I'd say obviously is reasonable use of that land, right? The subject parcel, that 600 foot parcel of waterfront, Ryan Woods townhomes, already developed with townhomes, they have reasonable use of that land. And in fact, some of them are actually objecting to this variance and you may hear from them later this morning. So there's reasonable use of the land there. They don't meet that criteria. Again, the applicant says, no, no, let's forget about all of that acreage. Let's forget about all those development rights. <coughs> and let's just look at this 50-foot <coughs> easement. Well, even if we do that, I'd submit that they have reasonable use of that easement. The applicant does not own waterfront property. They have an easement to access that waterfront. They have the ability to access that waterfront. They can come by foot, they can come by golf cart even based on their easement. They can come up to that and they can go up to their waterfront. They can take in the beauty of it. They can launch a kayak from the shoreline if the tides are right. They can fish from that shoreline. They have the rights and the ability to access that easement and to utilize it, which I would submit is reasonable use of that easement. What they're proposing is an observation pier. It's not to go to your point, a dock where there's gonna be a boat slip. There's not enough depth there. They're just using it to observe. They already have the ability to access that waterfront and to absorb and to use it from the shoreline. It's not required that they be able to build a dock. Just because there's language in a voluntary agreement that they entered into for an easement that says maybe one day you can build a dock. That doesn't create any grandfathered rights. That doesn't give them the ability. That doesn't trump Pinellas County Code. Otherwise, I could go put easements all over waterfront property and say, well, I got ability to use this dock. It doesn't matter that it doesn't apply with the code. I don't think that's the precedent that we want to set here today. It's also not, it is detrimental to the public welfare we'd submit. These are environmentally sensitive lands. Uh, there is a conservation easement over most of the Ryan Woods HOA property down on that northern side. And, and like I said, they already have reasonable use of that land. It's also detrimental to my clients, especially. That 33.5 feet setback that they're asking for instead of the 50, that jeopardizes their privacy, their property value. I have a picture here today that I think helps 
helps illustrate, and I have shared this picture with the applicant. And this is the asphalt of my client's driveway. So their driveway comes up along the side of their property. This is their car. Here's a golf cart. That's where the easement access is. So imagine, you know, if you're utilizing, the applicant's utilizing this easement, they're coming, they're parking their golf cart right there, right next to the side. And this stake is where that dock is proposed to start. And it would go out and it would go along the side property line, right along where my clients have their outdoor area, their pool deck, their dining room windows look right out there. What was previously very private, quiet area, all of a sudden is developed with a dock starting right there. I think you can see, that helps see the visual impact of that, which you can't see from the aerial photos, certainly. But I also want to make clear that this isn't necessarily just a single family dock, right? One of the reasons my clients are really concerned about this is because the, the applicant owns that five acres that can be by right developed with 20 single family homes. 2019, the applicant applied for rezoning to change it to 24 townhomes. What they want to build is a community amenity for a future subdivision. So now all of a sudden, where you see that golf cart, imagine four or five or six of them parked right there. Imagine people noon, morning, nighttime, whenever they feel, coming out using that observation dock. That privacy, that right to protect their property based on the setbacks that are required under Pinellas County Code, it's gone. It's gone. You suddenly have dozens of people right on the side of your yard day in and day out. It is detrimental to the public welfare. It doesn't meet the criteria. There are no special circumstances. There is no unnecessary hardship unless you consider the easement that they self-imposed an unnecessary hardship. But guess what? That's specifically under your code. A self-imposed hardship is not allowed to justify an unnecessary hardship for the purpose of meeting the criteria. When We'd your submit that it bought the property, were they aware of that easement? They were aware of the easement. Uh, there has there's been a lot of um, history in that that I'm not as familiar with. However, I will say that I know that the property owner did represent to them, well it can never be developed. You don't have to worry about that. You know, they know certainly that they have the right to access that waterfront. That representation is no different than the representation in a deed that maybe someday you want to build a roadway or a path or a walk. Absolutely. So those representations don't really hold water. Pardon Absolutely. The but um, if, if the, regardless of the dock, that easement is there. The Janus, the Anishes knew when they bought the property there was an easement there, which would allow people to use that easement. You could have that same row of golf carts there, whether there was a dock or not. Yes, certain, certainly you could. So and that they're traffic, not... that use of the easement, that's not, that doesn't make a difference whether the dock is there or not. The easement, in fact, is there. They know the easement's there. Absolutely. They admit the easement's there. They're not contesting their right to use the easement. But I do believe that if a community is built and a dock is there, it will certainly generate much higher traffic to visit the dock than a simple walk down to the waterfront and potentially, you know, fish from the shoreline. That zoning was there when they bought the house. Correct. Correct. So it's, there's no covert attempt that I can perceive out of this. This is you're portraying it almost as a covert action to provide an amenity for a future development. Well, I do believe that's what it is, and I believe that's why there are certain setback requirements in your code for the 50 feet. You know, someone might say, well, 16.5 feet, is that really that much more? Well, it is when you're talking about your property and your privacy and your, you know, protection of your property. So I would submit that that's why, why the setbacks are required under code. You mentioned um, something about environmental impact. Obviously, this board doesn't have anything to do with that. That takes a permit, and if they can get a permit from, would you agree, from DEP or whoever, or whoever whoever is the permitting source, then that's 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 a, that's another step they have to take at another time. But it's not an issue for here today. 
Absolutely. I do think that the development of these mangroves, and, and certainly it'd be better for there not to be development there, but if they meet their criteria in order to get a permit for environmental I, I aspects, just point that absolutely. Out. That, that, that is not something that we consider. That is something that is that's done during the permitting process. And Understood. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? <clears throat> no. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. your presentation. Is there anyone online? There are Objecting. currently no participants online. Thank you. Um, other objectors? <coughs> Come on. Good morning. Good, good morning. I'm Justin West. I'm, uh, I live at 590 Ryan's Woods Lane. It's the closest property to the Janishes and the Couture's property. I'm here today to represent the board. I am because we have a, a three member board. We have 21 people that live there. Um, the board put out to the members, uh, the, the residents, and the residents have determined we, we received only objections to them building the stock. Now, the reason for the objections may vary, um, you know. From people don't want the traffic there to people don't want, um, you know, think it's going to be an eyesore, you know, whatever reason they have. Um, as a board, I, I'm just representing the board coming in and, and saying what the, 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 the vote essentially was. And, and that there were zero, there was a lot of people that abstained, but there were zero votes in favor. Um, and that may be typical of this situation. I could say that um, we're being very we're, we're, we're considering the Janish's property line and all of this, and they're saying, oh, we need to be, we're 30 something feet. They're actually on our property. They're not 50 feet or any, they're zero feet from our property. So we're not, is the south border not come into question here at all? I understand they have a, a and personally, I don't have a, 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 any particular opinion on it. I just am here to represent the board and, and the board's opinion is that they do not want it. Um, I can't see it. I'm the closest person. I can't even see over there from my house. But I do understand the Chanish's position if they do have 20-something people come in there. And I know as you spoke that if it's an easement, people could walk over there. Nobody's going to walk over there if there's not a dock over there. I, I mean, there's, there's no reason to go down there. If you put a path there, maybe you might have one or two people there. If you put a dock there, there are going to be people in my backyard. And, it's just fl flat out. That's what's going to happen. I mean, and so that's basically all I have to say about it as far as representing the board and um, and the p property owners in Ryan's Woods. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> My name's Arlene Burns. I am the property manager for Ryan's Woods subdivision, and I'm here on behalf of the owners at the request of the board. To file an objection, the, there are many kayakers, canoers that use that little cove in there, where the stock is going to be, pier, whatever you want to call it, jutting out there is going to cause them not to really be able to go in there, because the where it narrows down, it's it's fairly narrow, and that's basically what their objections are. There's also a lot of kayakers, canoers that come in, they put in in Stancy Park and come in there, take a break while they're out paddling around. Just, you know, sit back, relax, watch the ducks, whatever. Basically, that's it. We have no objection to a kayak access of any kind, but the pier jutting way out there is the problem. So, okay. Any questions for anybody? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Does the applicant want to come back up? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Craig Jurasky for the applicant again. Uh, so with respect to whether we actually hold the applicant holds the requisite upland interest, um, as I said and as staff said, we did work through that legal issue um, and there is case law that an easement access to, to waterfront does extend the right to a dock to that easement holder. 
this is the case. Um, it was provided to staff. I can provide it to the clerk. Um, I'd like to put that in the record. So I think um, I'd have a, uh, I haven't heard any substantial competent evidence from any of the objectors that have shown any contrary case law to dispute that fact. Um, the proposition that, that, that we fail the variance criteria because of some future rezoning and redevelopment of the, sub, of the, the applicant's upland property is, is irrelevant. Um, what if we uh, rezoned it to industrial and wanted to put an industrial facility with some sort of industrial water discharge. I mean, the, you could go down that rabbit hole and think of a, a zillion different scenarios <coughs> that would be objectionable. So you have to make your decision on what's before you today on the record. There are single family homes on the Kocher property. This is a family property. All they're trying to do is enhance the use. They've kayaked in that cove as kids. They want to add a, 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 an observation pier with, a, with kayak access to enhance that use. It's reasonable. These are the types of docks that scatter that waterway. Um, you know, the, as uh, I think Mr. Bromstein expressed, they took with notice of these easements. They knew that these uses were going to be a, a, along their property. They live in R2 zoning. Janish's property, Kocher properties, R2. The side and rear setbacks, uh, I think rear is 10 feet, side is six feet. So there could be structures and uses much closer than this dock that we're proposing today. Um, we provided <coughs> you with substantial competent evidence that this is a unique scenario. That easement that, that gives the applicant the right to access water is unique. And it was put into place in 1957, long before the county's regulations that created the setback variance requirement. If those regulations were never put into place, we wouldn't be here. They could just go ahead and, and build the dock, just like in, in the 50s. But you know, we've, we've advanced and we've recognized that certain reasonable regulation is appropriate. And here we're following that process to make sure that we do it responsibly and that we take into consideration and mitigate the impacts to the surrounding environment and property. So, you have any questions? On Mr. Tarasky, yes. the, uh, could you address the applicant's uh, assertion that there is um, 600 feet of waterfront and you're ignoring the other 550 feet and, and putting the dock just on this particular 50 feet of that waterfront? Sure, because in order for us to have the, the right to have a dock, we have to show requisite upland interest. Well, our upland interest is tied to that easement, and that easement only extends 50 feet from the north boundary. So, so the, the, the assertion that there's 600 feet of waterfront is not property owned by the applicant? The property's upland interest is only 50 feet wide. The subject waterfront property that the code looks at is much, much wider, which is, again, why the 50 feet is required, because of the, the width of that waterfront. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I'm not sure whether to ask you or to ask the water people. Okay. But I'll ask you, and then if you need to, you can call them up. Yep. Um, this is really, really complicated stuff with a lot of documents and, and a lot of testimony. But it seems to me, to simplify, uh, the, the issue is the 600 feet by 50 feet. Is that right? It's all about that 600 by 50 feet and where to put a dock in there, if a dock at all? Is there something more to this that I'm not understanding? Well, the, the Couture's property at the, the 600 Pennsylvania, this all has to do with easements. The Ryan's yeah, Woods property, that. yeah, they don't but own that. It's all that, about so the 600 by 50 feet. That, that's, that's where they want to put a dock. Right. That's, We're trying that's to decide, thing, is do we let them put a dock there or not? Is that true? And if I understood the presentation, <clears throat> that 600 feet, the eastern part of it, uh, they can't put it there because it has to be 145 feet away from the other, the other end of the, uh, opposite, the opponent's property. So it can't be over, they talked about there's 600 feet, but there's not 600 feet because there's 145 feet at least that's taken out of that. You follow me, Craig? I am. Maybe if you put up the, uh, my presentation, I can put up a visual that I think will help explain. Yeah, there's a lot of visuals, but the one I was looking for wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> It's on ours, yeah. Okay. All 
Oh, I lost it. Okay. So this orange parcel is the Ryan Woods townhome parcel. Mm -hmm. This is the parcel that has the waterfront. And you, there's a lot of mangroves and, and, and vegetation on this, but the mean high water line, the shoreline, generally follows on the north side along that, that mangrove fringe. And then it follows pretty tightly along that eastern property line, about halfway down that parcel. And then it kind of juts out around. Um, there's a big chunk of, of aquatic vegetation in there. When people talk about, you've had testimony about there's 600 feet of waterfront. Um, it's, that, it's that long shoreline in the Ryan Woods townhome parcel that they're talking about. Um, and on this tax map, you can see on that, the purple is the, the townhome. And there's a, there's a dimension there on the tax parcel of 300 and some feet. Mm -hmm. And that's measured down to that little, where that townhome building juts out. And then it, it continues to the south. So that's, that's the, you know, when, when you're looking at interpreting the code, that shoreline is roughly 600 feet in that parcel. But the applicant's property interest is only the north 50 feet of that. Um, you mentioned the 145 feet that's not a requirement by code to keep. That's merely the dimension along the waterfront between the proposed dock and the Janishes where their property line intersects the shoreline. And I think during my, my, my presentation, the, the more plain vanilla setback variance requests you get, that's, those are the dimensions you're looking at. You're just looking at that side measurement from side to side um, and you're not typically looking at dimensioning backwards, you know, across the uplands to some property behind the dock. Um, I looked, I was not able to find a similar application that, that applied the, the setback uh, requirement regulation that way. Staff was unable to, to find I'm it. I'm out. So and it's and stay on that slide. And I get all that. Okay. But just looking at that slide. Yes. <clears throat> it seems to me that um, the applicant... Um, pictures, could have put the dock further west, but I don't think that the Janishes would have liked that any better. No, I don't think so. It would, uh, it would move it closer to their waterfront and... Um, and they can't put it south because then it would be in the water. And it would be outside of their outside easement. Outside of their easement. Yes. Right? Right. So I'm trying to figure out, it seems to me that what the people who are opposing this are saying, no dock, no time, nowhere. Correct. And, and I'm trying to figure out, uh, is that the position that this board must take and should take? But given the pictures, um, the, the argument that they could have put it somewhere else <laughs> fails. Yeah, we, no, we they couldn't have put it, it anyplace else that anybody away. would have accepted. Yeah, we pushed it as far away from Other everything. than the applicant. The applicant might love to have a dock that extends out the whole 600 feet. Yes. But nobody else would. That's okay. not the 600 foot measurement. That's not yeah. the 600 foot. The yeah. 600 foot measurement is south of here. Yeah, it, it and it's actually, approximately 300 isn't the 600 feet. foot measurement of waterfront, isn't that the Ryan's townhouse? Yeah, the entire, that's the entire shoreline. So, how did the applicant, how did the um, objectors uh, allege that, that the applicant had 600 feet of waterfront? to build on. That's no. not their property. Oh, it's not our, yeah, we have no inter easement interest in anything else, so no, it's not our property. I was going to ask that question of the... Of the okay. Can I ask you one other thing? Um, the actual access, like if the dock is built or, wh or the whatever is built, is that off of their property or is... Um, where does that begin showing the picture that the, that mm -hmm. the opponent showed? Mm -hmm. Um, so here's a, a blow up of that cove, that corner. Okay. Uh, the top of it is the, the dock easements. And then as it extends south, there are a series of easements that provide access from that dock easement down to the Kocher property. 
And the Kocher property is that parcel down in the lower right-hand corner of, of, uh, of the screen. So there's, there would just be a path to go up. To that, yeah. okay. And the, the, the Kochers don't own the, the townhome property, right? That's not part of the application. So no. to make the case that they could build on that is no different than I can build on that, right? right. Yeah. yeah, and if someone was to, there was a, you can, I can just start slapping easements on properties. Well, that would be a self-created hardship, and that would fail your variance criteria. I just wanted to address that question and clarify, because I think that was misunderstood. I'm not contending that the applicant has 600 feet. I'm just talking about the subject property where the dock is going to be built, and my contention is that you have to consider that entire parcel that is the subject property where the dock is going to be built under your code. Your code doesn't contemplate just considering easement rights wherever they were granted. What Attorney Trasky just said, I completely agree with. You have an easement agreement that limits you to 50 feet. That's a self-imposed hardship. Maybe they need to ne renegotiate where they can have that easement rights with Ryan Woods HOA. But you're here under your code to look at the subject property, which is the entire parcel. So that's when I refer to that 600 feet. I am referring to that as the subject parcel. It's not the applicants. The applicant undoubtedly only has rights to 50 feet under their current easement agreements. But those are easement agreements that their, their you know, father, grandfather negotiated. They self-impose those restrictions to only those 50 feet. No dock has been existing and doesn't exist right right now. They say some remnants have been found potentially that have been floating down the bayou, but certainly no doc has been there. No aerial photos were submitted any time recently, but, not since my clients owned the property. But, but so, the code allows to build inside the easement. The code does not allow building inside the easement. The code says it's required to be 50 foot. But back. It, it, that's why you're here on a variance. It's it, the code. Yeah, but, but you can build with inside the easement. That's my question. Right. Yes. Again, I, I understand what. We're, okay. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions for me on that? To be clear, the 600 feet is not waterfront. Well, there is 600 feet of waterfront there. Not no, owned by. Not, not, not owned by, owned by them. Though. Not that the Couture Trust has any rights to. Well, Correct. Well, well, then why they would, would the, have to renegotiate uh, their easement agreement. Well, to have yeah. additional footage. With all respect, you painted a picture that they had 600 feet and they were ignoring 550 of it and only addressing the 50. And that is, you know, not exactly the case. Well, I apologize. I didn't mean to misrepresent that. I tried to be very clear. That's the subject property is 600 feet. Yeah, thank, thank you. Greg, there, there was, could you put this up there? And then I'm going to ask you a question about it. Sure. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's fine. Put that down and then I'll come back to you. Um, <laughs> she testified that there's no evidence that there was ever a dock. You had direct testimony with, with the party with knowledge that there was a dock there. So, uh, yes, sir. Yep. Put it on the seal. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Okay. I, just to make sure I understand what I'm voting on <clears throat> or may vote on. Uh, your head's in the way. Head's in the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to vote on your head. There's a camera above your head. Yeah. Yeah. Good hair, but I don't want to vote on You nice hair. <laughs> okay, so the green part is the Couture, Couture's property. Yes. The yellow is a little easement where they can walk up to the red easement. Is that correct? Is uh, the red area an easement or not an easement? The red area is an easement. Okay, that and is, how big is it? It's uh, approximately 50 feet wide and 377 and feet. feet. Uh, long. Yep. This is a little bit incorrect. The coachers actually own a one foot sliver along that west edge of that yellow. Mm -hmm. um, and then the yellow is the easements that, that are adjacent to that little sliver. Okay. But that's what this is all about. Yeah. It's about putting a dock in that corner yes. of the red area. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. I told cool. you that 10 minutes ago. I know. <laughs> I'll close the public. They beat us up with all this testimony. I figured I'd get my shot. Get your shot in there. I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll close the public um, hearing and go to the board. Pleasure of the board. Uh, every neighbor would like to maintain the pristine uh, existence that they uh, have before something occurs. But um, I, I just I don't find that there's uh, any 
egregious action here by the applicant. Uh, I, I think it's reasonable use. And the, the fact of the matter is the easement's been in place for 70 years or so, and uh, that easement would allow traffic regardless. And the zoning was in place when the uh, when the Anishes bought their house. The, the multifamily zoning um, or the allowance for 20 units on that property there's no there's no real surprises here um, so I, um, I I think staff is correct in their interpretation of this and the recommendation from staff for um, approval of the variance um, is um, appropriate and I'm going to move for approval in accordance with that recommendation and the findings of fact that are outlined in the staff's report Second. Is there any more discussion from the board? No. No. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes six to zero. <coughs> Move to approve the minutes of the February 7th meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 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 Joey didn't like the minutes. Can we close yeah, the meeting? Just Do I have to vote to close the meeting? I can finally hear you. Just say we're adjourned. We're adjourned. Okay. <laughs> uh.